Hi everyone, Mossimo here from the Blue Root team. And today I have a really exciting video. It's one that honestly we should have had on our channel a long time ago, and it's heavily requested. It's how to create an online web form and how to then integrate that back into the CRM. The scenario we're solving is someone writes into your website and then they automatically get sent into the CRM and maybe an email goes out or something of that nature. So in this video, I'm gonna go over a few key things so that you can make an online web form and put it on your site in honestly minutes. Number one, where to find this inside of the CRM and how to set it up. Number two, some tips and tricks on things I've learned over the years on how to set it up properly so that your reporting works and some of your automations, et cetera, inside the CRM. And then lastly is how to look at analytics on it. So Zoho CRM has this really neat feature where you can track who's going to your form, who's filling it out, who's half filling it out, and you can do some A-B testing over time. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe on this video. We love hearing from our subscribers and we love commenting back. Also, I'd love to meet you in the office hours that we host every week. You can see a link for it right here. A lot of our subscribers are coming to this asking very valid questions and tricky questions, and I love helping everyone out. Enjoy the video. All right, so let's get into this. So the first spot you're gonna to wanna to go to is the settings. So if you don't know, when you first log into your CRM, there will be a setting icon in the top right, or a gear icon, I should say. Once you're back here, the easiest way to find these, honestly, is to, so there's a bunch of stuff back here, right? But the easiest way that I tell people to find them is to just, in the search bar, type in web forms and you'll see they come up. So there's a bunch of different things here that we'll go through, but predominantly we're gonna start with the web form tab. So now we're on the web form tab. It'll look like this the very first time you ever use it. And so we're gonna go ahead and hit new form. Now, as always with my videos, I point out that Zoho has all kinds of knowledge base and FAQ and stuff like that here. So feel free to watch their videos. It might be a little higher level than mine, but it'll at least give you some groundwork. So we're gonna hit new form. Now, once we get to this page, we're gonna name it. So this is the first step. No one actually sees this externally. If you don't want them to, you could just call it your online inquiry. And then you're gonna choose the module. So this is the module that the record's gonna go into. So if you still have the lead module, you could choose lead, or in my case, I'm gonna choose contacts. You can see there's other areas it can go into as well, but typically it's lead or contact. So now it brings up a drag and drop builder. And so this probably looks quite familiar. It's kind of like the back end of the CRM where you can drag first name over and last name and stuff like that. So it's very similar. So we're going to go ahead and do this. Now you could see here, last name is mandatory, right? And so this is something that uh, every Zoho CRM has where the last name is mandatory. So I see people do a bunch of things here, right? So number one, some people just put first name and last name and they keep last name mandatory. Or what you can do is you can actually hit this little gear icon and you can just rename this to full name. Now it's not necessarily the proper way to do it every time, but if you wanna limit the amount of data that people put into the system, you can make this full name. Now on their end, they're going to see full name. And when they write in, it's only gonna go into the last name. So I would approach with caution here, but if you are that type where you just want a few fields on your form, the lower barriers to entry type thing, then that may be a strategy you want. So then I typically tell people to bring in the lead source. And this is another tip that I tell people is, well, typically you don't want the client to fill out the lead source, right? You want when they come in for it to automatically say they came from your website or your landing page or whatever. So what you can do here is you can actually mark it as hidden and then you can set the default value. So what you're doing here is now you're saying, okay, they're never gonna see this field. But whenever they write in with this web form, when the lead comes in, it's automatically gonna mark it as web research. So this is a really handy feature that you can use that allows you to track your leads better. You can use this strategy on any field, right? We have a bunch here. Typically you ask for the email. You typically also ask for the phone. And then I see a lot of people ask for like a description and Zoho typically has a description field. We might've hidden it in our system here, in this demo system. But I would recommend having like a multi-line field, making it, description and then again renaming it for the front end right so you can click here and you can rename it to uh comments right so on the client's end they see comments on your end it goes into the description so you don't constantly have to change the way your database works you can label the field something different externally and still have a great use case so there's a couple other things you can do here you can also change the font sizes and the font type you can change the color of the font background color the label align so some people want it like that or like 
like this, right? So more vertically aligned. And then you can choose the width. 600 is very common, but you could technically make it larger. At any point, you can preview it. So it'll kind of show you what it looks like and you can type through and get a feel for what it would look like on the website. And there are some other fields that I definitely recommend. Down here under advanced fields, there's two here that are very important. Standard CAPTCHA, that's just the basic one that you probably know where it does something like this. Or there's a reCAPTCHA, you can only have one of them. And the reCAPTCHA takes a bit more work. I'd have to make another video on how to do this. There is kind of a, a process here to do it. It's all kind of through Google. You need a Google account and all of this stuff, but then Google will do this, I'm not a robot thing and pop up some pictures and stuff like that. So this one is technically the more secure or it will reduce the amount of spam you get. Both of them still get spam. Definitely the CAPTCHA one more than the reCAPTCHA. So I would encourage you to invest the time in it. You can also change the names of these, right? So you could name it whatever you want. So now at this point, you've built your web form and there's some hidden fields and things of that nature that are really handy. Now we're gonna go ahead and hit next. So now on this page, you have to tell the CRM a couple things. Number one, where's this form gonna live? Technically you could like one by one add links like this. So you hit add and then you could add another one. So .com. You could go through that if you want. Another option that you can do, so you can get rid of these, is you can just write the asterisk and hit add, and now it'll let it be on any website, right? So if you don't know all the sites or the pages that it's gonna be on, you can go ahead and do this asterisk. The second piece, which is a bit more strict, is where are people gonna land when they're done the form? So this is important. So I can paste this and then I would recommend everyone have a thank you page or something like that. So when they fill out the form, when they're done, where are they gonna land? The home page, a thank you page or whatever. So you should build this on your website. It's not only that Zoho wants it, but like Google wants it for tracking of cookies and all that stuff. So a lot of the companies for better marketing tracking want this landing page when a form is submitted because that counts as a conversion, right? So then there's another couple options here. Number one, you can add some tags, right? Here, it will actually be a little different if you have an account with many users. You can actually choose who the user goes to or you can put it on a round robin or you could set up an assignment rule. For example, if one of the fields in your form was X, then always give it to X. If one of the fields was Y, always give it to Y. So you can get a bit specific with this. Typically, I see it being assigned to one person. You can add some tags. So if you have some tags in your CRM, feel free to use those. Double opt-in. This is um, basically what it says. When they fill it out, it's then gonna send them an email that will just double verify that they wanna be a subscriber. Here, you can set up an email notification that will actually send to the owner of the record. So basically one of your staff letting them know, hey, a new lead, right? Or, and this is just a system generated one, or you can make your own template. Similarly, this one, I find this is very common that you, I mean, you should use this. So you can make a new rule or you can just choose a default response that goes to everyone. And so whenever someone fills this out, the end user or the lead or the client will get this email. So if you hit select template, it's gonna bring you through your normal template thing. You can choose a template that's already here or you can create a new one. These last two are interesting. Visitor tracking is powered by Sales IQ. So that's an app that Zoho has that you can install on your website. And if you actually do this, it's actually going to recognize if you have Sales IQ and then it'll link everything. What that does is it allows Sales IQ to track where they came from. The referrer, did they come from AdWords, et cetera. So it's, it's definitely handy if you're on Zoho One and you have Sales IQ and I have some other videos on Sales IQ if you wanna watch those and figure out how to set it up. And then the last one is requesting for approval. Not a lot of people use this. This is you used at kind of a very high volume and you want to request basically the lead comes in and it has to be approved before they're added to the CRM. This is something I see very high volume companies have where they get a lot of spam or a lot of people that aren't a fit and they want to approve them first. So now we'll hit save. I'll turn this off. Save. And now it brings us to the last page and you have three ways to embed this on your website. So source is literally the raw HTML. And when you use this, you can actually embed it in a little HTML widget if you're on WordPress or something like that. You can give it to your web developer and they can actually dress it up with CSS. So on our website, all of our forms on our website are actually Zoho CRM forms, but we've dressed them up and made them look a certain way. The second way is embed. This way is a lot easier, especially on WordPress and things of that nature. You just embed this script here. So on WordPress, it'll allow you to embed some JavaScript for a web form. You can use that. iFrame is very similar. iFrame is very common. The, the only, I guess, problem with iFrame is what you see is what you get from the CRM. So the exact aesthetic of the form is what's gonna be iframed onto your site. So if you're okay with the aesthetic, perfect. Use the iFrame, it takes two minutes. You can just Google iFrame in WordPress, copy this code and put it in. 
So that's kind of the final step. So now we've done it. I wanted to talk a little bit about this now. So Zoho has built out some tools to actually track conversions. So it's really neat. You'll see how many submissions, how many contacts, right? And you can hit view analytics and dig deeper. So it'll actually start telling you how many people have come to the form, how many people have started it, how many have submitted it, and how long does it take them to do it? You can see daily, weekly, monthly. You can see where they are and what contacts were actually created daily, weekly, monthly. You can also do this on all your forms and you can do it based on time. So it'll start having analytics with all of your forms if you create more than one on this page. So that's basically it, how you create an online web form. And in, in subsequent videos, I'll probably go over the creating A-B testing and getting a bit more hardcore. Appreciate your time. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.